When I first noticed that something was wrong, I was feeling awful. I just, just did not feel normal and I was going to the bathroom more than I normally was. She also just acted really funny. Um, she would also get out of the shower and tell me, Mom, I don't feel good. I feel like I'm going to pass out. We went into my doctor's office. They tested my blood sugar. I was 298. And they said that we're gonna send you up to Children's Hospital the next morning. My everyday life changed, with, especially at school and home, with having to watch my blood sugar and still try and live a normal life, which is, it's very possible. Dr. Dye, we actually met in the hospital while Caitlin was having treatment. Um, they sat down with us, went over our plan, talked about um, blood sugars, um, how to treat everything, how often we were gonna come in and see her. Um, we do come here every three months for a visit with Dr. Dye. So how have things been going? Things have been going really good. I'm, I'm surprised with my numbers. What it's like to work with Dr. Dye, she is so amazing. She's so helpful. She gets on a personal level. She asks Caitlin how she's doing, um, how her life is doing, what she can do to make life better, easier. He was 15 months. And found out that his blood sugar, what was it, 621? 661. 661. Yeah. It was really a shock. <laughs> he has seen the same people from the time he was admitted to the hospital on the first diagnosis day all the way up till now. After all this time, he still sees the same people. Oh, there you go. Okay. So, what do we do with this? Look at my ear. Yeah. And Dr. Dyer was right there. She's always been like, very involved and we were able to trust the people that we first started working with from the beginning. He was very thin, um, very tired, and he had some acid in his blood, um, but he was feeling a lot better once he started getting the insulin. First of all, she loves PJ and it's so evident that she loves PJ, so we just kind of talked through things. I'm really inspired by all of my patients and families, by the way that they react to challenges. Particularly PJ's family has reacted to this challenge and by having grief at first, but the grief turned into empowerment and they were able to take this challenge and, and run with it and I find that so inspiring. Here at Nationwide Children's, we have quite a uh, multidisciplinary team that's involved with uh, diabetes care. I believe in a really proactive approach to diabetes, so we've involved um, social workers, uh, nurse practitioners, uh, diabetes educators, and uh, dietitians in a very proactive way. The team approach to diabetes care is critical. It is intensive insulin management, intensive clinical care, does that correlate with better outcomes for patients? Less heart attacks, less blindness, less kidney disease, and indeed it does. We set the national example for how diabetes care should be performed, which is very proactive. We want to identify problems, get on top of, of issues before they become a problem. Dr. Rapask is the new leader of the endocrinology section and he has a vision for taking the endocrinology section and diabetes care into the next century. I think that there are a number of uh, very promising developments on the horizon. The real cures are going to be a little bit less predictable because we have to make some breakthroughs and that breakthrough could come next year or it could take a few more years. So investment in research and, and keep it on developing um, new ideas and new approaches. I'm on the ADA um, National Committee that, that helps uh, guide the scientific meetings that are, that are sponsored and, and held by the ADA each year. There are national standards that are set and, and revised and I think this is really important for driving quality because we have a consensus opinion that's that's updated every year. I think the ADA does tremendous work. It's uh, so comprehensive because it's involved in everything from uh, research, advocacy, and education.
when your child first gets diagnosed, you might feel like you're out of control yeah. and that your hands are tied. A little helpless feeling. Yeah. Well, a lot of helpless feelings. Um, we take a day at a time. We take an hour at a time. We take a meal at a time. Um, we don't look ahead too far. Um, if she's low, we deal with the lows. If she's high, we deal with the highs. But now we're at a point, and other parents will get there too, where you feel like you're controlling the diabetes and it's not controlling you anymore. And it feels good to get there, so you have to keep trying. Don't give up, and don't be afraid to call the doctor.